vlog a day, 458. Good morning. It is Tuesday, I think. Yes. For those of you tracking, yesterday was a pretty stressful day for me. I had a long day, had to gather some stuff, had a phone call. Feel better after the phone call, but was advised by the lawyer I was talking to that I should probably wait until everything is wrapped up before I actually share what's going on in entirety. And so we should probably do that. I'm, I will tell you guys about it shortly, but it's gonna, well, shortly, it's gonna be a couple of months before I can tell you what's going on. But I will have to fly back to the States for a couple of weeks, next month probably. We'll find out. Nothing bad, definitely not the easiest thing to deal with, a little bit rough around the edges, but when it's over, we'll be well worth it and I'll be in a better place for it. So don't worry, uh, but I guess be curious because I'm sorry about I, that I can't tell you what's going on. But that's gonna continue. I'll try just not to tell you when I'm like totally stressed out by it because I know that's kind of mean to be like, hey, here's this thing I can't talk about. Uh, so we'll try to avoid that to some degree. Anyways, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please just subscribe. My little cardboard thing here is reminding me to remind you, if you haven't, please hit the little subscribe button. I've got to go on tour and I'm running a little bit late, so we should probably hit the road. weather is absolute insanity. It's like shorts weather in October. And supposedly there's a theory going around that it's because of all the storms absorbing all the energy. I don't know. I gotta look it up, see what's going on. But anyways, it's a delightfully warm October here in Paris. I'm feeling a lot better today. I am feeling a lot better today. So stress levels are lower. I'll get some more sleep. It'll be good. We're gonna go to the right. And I'm supposed to be talking about what I'm reading today, which I haven't been super active in reading, but I'm reading two things right now. So for Red Ugly Wednesday, we'll talk about those two things for just a minute at least before we figure out what else is going on. And I'm finally meeting with Phil to talk about our tax nonsense here this afternoon, so that should be good as well. I think Phil and I finally got our tax stuff figured out. I mean, mine was pretty easy. I just actually had to go in and pay, but he's getting his all like, you know, sorted as far as just his status, which is understandably frustrating because in order to pay your taxes online, you have to like log in to create accounts with basically three different websites that all just kind of funnel you through each other until they finally let you pay instead of just being like one location. And they physically mail you your password. They don't, you can't make your own password. They mail it to you and then you gotta wait for that. So, <laughs> fun moments. As for what I'm reading, uh, I've started reading Save the Cat. It's a book on screenwriting, actually, and how to write screenplays well, which I'm not out to write screenplays, but there's something about understanding. I feel like there's something about movies. There's something that you can dive into a little bit more easily than a book. So as far as understanding and taking advantage of that understanding of story structure better, that's one of the goals for me is to be reading more and more books specifically about story structure, writing, uh, and really better understanding the fundamentals of the craft that I'm diving into. So that's one of the things I'm reading. And then my friend Natasha's book, The Elites, which was her first book, and I'm almost finished with it. And it's a fun read. Um, I can link to both of them below. But yeah, I definitely need to be reading more technical books on storytelling and writing because I think that that's the most important for me right now. And back. I'm a little bit hungry, but I also want to go for a run. So, yeah, I'm kind of caught up a little bit on the sleep. I mean, I didn't get quite as much as I wanted last night, but. It's amazing how when you start, you know, sleeping a little bit more, you're like, uh, that much more tired. So hopefully one more good night's sleep will put me right over the top. For those of you worried that I'm not sleeping enough, which I'm not, but I'll get there. 
So, we'll go for a run on Save the Cat. I haven't gotten very far into Save the Cat yet, but the thing that he really harps on at the beginning, which I think is really valuable, is the log line. Or if you were writing a book, you'd call it your hook. It's not the whole pitch that you give. It's just like that one or two sentences that really sucks you in. It sets up the whole book, and you can imagine a million things happening from there, right? A little bit of a twist of irony, like the entire story, and just a nugget. And that is really hard to do, especially if you've already written a book, to go back and figure that out. But he has a very good point. If you don't have a good log line, if you don't have a good hook, you may not have a very good story to tell. Perhaps it's a good story without it, maybe. But if you can't condense a story down into some little nugget that really captures the heart of it very, very quickly, something might be awry. So it's a good exercise to be thinking of, to be kind of working from that side. And I guess the question that I have is, should you tell the story first and then go back and figure out what that log line is and then go back through and refine it? Or should you figure out your log line right off the bat and then write your story from there? I think he's arguing that you should probably start with the log line and it's not necessarily a bad idea. Definitely not how I do it. Which means I've gotta go back and really think through, okay, what what is this story? Anyways, let's go for a run. at a nine minute pace, just over a nine minute pace. I need to be running more. I'm not getting any faster. I need to run longer is what I need to do. But part of the reason I'm not running longer is because I lost my glide, which is like, it's like a, a thing that helps to keep you from chafing too much when you're running. And after about four or five miles, that's when it starts to get serious. So I need to get some more of that here soon. You know, what I did find was the resonance point of these shorts. Uh, you know when you're running and the, the pockets are just baggy enough to move and you get the right rhythm where your phone or your keys or whatever just starts going nuts. Hit that a couple times on the way back. Because my, I ran a little bit faster on the last mile. It's also really, really obnoxious. So I'm gonna make myself some ravioli and then sit down for a minute, which would be great. You know, I was telling my sister this, I'm baiting sharing this because I don't know how much you guys want to hear about this stuff either. But you know when you meet people that are amazing and then it leaves you with that sense of both like inspiration and a sense of like, oh wow, that's cool. I'm glad there are people like this in the world. Very interesting, especially if they're, you know, an attractive person of the opposite gender. For me, whatever gender you prefer and however attractive you find them for whatever reasons. It's really funny because you meet those people and you're at once kind of inspired and you're like, wow, this is amazing. I'm glad to meet this person. And then at the same time, it kind of peaks that sense of loneliness that we all have, single or not, we all we also have a little bit of loneliness within us and just kind of leaves you thirsting for something. And I've, it's been an interesting week. For those of you who are concerned, I said my stupid thing from this last week was that I texted an ex who was horrible for me. Don't worry, as requested by more than one of you, and including my sister, I deleted her phone number and blocked her on WhatsApp. We go through seasons of talking back and forth, but you know, it's probably best just to walk away from that one. But what's interesting is I wasn't thinking about her the next day. It was somebody else that I was thinking about I, I actually had a dream about someone else and thought about her the next day and it put me in a weird, it's just, it's just really weird how like there's an aspect of a person that sticks with you and that makes you miss them even if things could never have worked out anyways, even if they treated you terribly along the way. It's just funny how we love people regardless of how they treat us sometimes or regardless of just whether or not we should or whether or not it's a good idea. It doesn't matter because love doesn't care, right? If love was anthropomorphic, which I'm sure we like to make it, but yeah, I've just been thinking about that a little bit lately. That's why do we love the people we love and all that kind of stuff. So those are some of the thoughts that are going around in here, along with a bunch of other nonsense. It's been a very, very packed and emotionally charged week in some strange and unforeseen ways. So uh, with that, I am all sweaty and gross and nasty, and I'm going to take a shower and whatnot after I stand in front of a fan for a while to cool down. In the meantime, check out this really funny video that I found on Reddit and posted on Twitter this morning. And if you're not following me on Twitter already, you should, because this is the kind of stuff that I love to share. It was entitled, How to Impress the Ladies at Work. 